Hi, my name is Nicole Garrett. I'm Head of Driving Simulation here at Dynasma, and today we're going to be looking at how drivers can control oversteer on our DMG1 motion generator. Oversteer is a way of describing the balance of the car, and in particular, when a car is oversteering, this means that it is rear grip limited. So as the driver tries to go faster around the corner, the back end of the car steps out and the driver has to counter steer to correct that. Understeer, on the other hand, is when the car is front grip limited. The driver tries to put more lock in, doesn't pick up the additional front grip and can understeer wide. So in simulators, latency is the delay between something happening with the simulator's vehicle model, for example, the back end of the car stepping out, and the motion system providing that feedback to the driver. In the real car, that latency isn't there. As soon as the car moves, the, the driver is able to feel it. Other simulators add latency of several tens of milliseconds, which is effectively slowing down the driver's reaction time. And what this means is that they're not able to control the simulated vehicle as they would be able to the real one. But it's particularly problematic if we're thinking about a very unstable or oversteery car. Dynismo's extremely low latency removes this problem and means that the driver is able to drive the simulated vehicle on the edge just like they would be able to in reality. In order for the simulator to be useful, it needs to display good correlation to the real race car. This means that the vehicle model has to be accurate, but also the motion platform and the visuals need to be giving the drivers the same cues as they feel in reality. And this is an area where the Denisma motion generator really excels. We're going to have a look at an oversteer event at Turn 10 at Barcelona. So what we can see here is when the back end of the car starts to step out, we see that in the yaw acceleration of the simulated vehicle. Then a very short time later, in this case four milliseconds, we see the same your acceleration change in the motion platform, and that's a measured movement from the sensors that we have on the system. Then about 100 milliseconds later, which is the reaction time of a skilled driver, we see the drivers start to apply their corrections. So we see a correction applied to the steering and we see them change their throttle input. And it's these corrections that allow them to catch the back end of the car before it spins out. In other simulators that might have 50 milliseconds of latency, the driver's reaction time is effectively being increased by 50%. And that means that they're not able to react to these high frequency cues effectively. Race teams use driver in the loop simulators for two purposes. Firstly, they use them in order to evaluate potential developments of the car before they've even designed or manufactured them. Secondly, they can use the simulator to prepare for races and optimize the setup of the car around a particular racetrack. We're lucky enough to have been able to invite some of the world's greatest automotive and racing test drivers here to drive DMG1. They tell us time and again what a massive step forward this is over existing technology. In particular, they talk to us about how smooth it is and how they can feel the most small, subtle changes going on in the car model. Also, the amount of information they get through the motion platform and how quickly they get it. 